Let's take a trip down memory lane to that one time we stopped by Shop Houston to use their hub dyno and prep for Texas 2K. So how'd we do today? I think we did pretty good. So we were having some uh, problems with fueling. So when we got here, we strapped the car down to the dyno and it, uh, it made great power on ethanol. We were actually pretty surprised. We made almost 1900. It wasn't a full pull or anything like that. It, uh, we lifted at 8,000 RPM and um, didn't have ice in the intercooler. So we were pretty enthusiastic, coolant pressure, issue that we were having in uh, World Cup was solved so we went to put it on methanol and it was basically a journey for the last day trying to figure out what the heck was going on so we measured um, we, we decked the heads a few bow to clean up everything so we had to mess around with cam timing cam phasing and uh, changed out ignition coils changed out cam sensors I mean we changed everything we were facing an ignition issue so the car makes Makes good power on straight ethanol, but it, it was struggling to do it on the on the methanol. So after a mighty battle with this dyno and Rob going at it for a while, we decided, hey, there's got to be something in, uh, in the ignition system in the the harness that I made. I made a, uh, an engine harness for this car about two years ago and made it a uh, quick disconnect and all that. And I think uh, basically there's got to be some kind of a grounding issue, or a pin fit issue, something that's not allowing the ignition system to be at full power. Um, straight methanol. So we ended up cutting the fuel and uh, made clean pulls all the way through. And uh, basically just shy of of uh, 2,000 horsepower on the dyno. And we know that going down the track that these turbos do make a little more boost with the ram air system on the car. So uh, if we walk over here to the uh, the dyno, you can kind of see the difference uh, on the, you know, can't really tell the numbers here, but um, the red graph was straight ethanol. And then we uh, blended the fuel. Basically, we're not really making any more horsepower, but where it comes in, that's going to help us in the short track. And uh, you know, it's not really making any more torque either. Just a little bit sooner, still in the safe zone in the torque curve. And we're, I'm happy with what it did. It's basically where I wanted it to be. I mean, yeah, we could push it a little bit more, but I think on the, a cast block with the engine program that we have, this is the area where we can run, go rounds, and you know, go to multiple events before we have to service this car. I mean, this thing made, I don't know how many pulls on the dyno today, probably 20. And then all the pulls we did before in Atlanta, for World Cup, and we went rounds. I mean, we've been on the track probably a dozen times with this at full power. I'm pretty happy with where we're at. So all we need to do now is uh, service the car, put the front shaft in it. You now it's a lot of pulls for methanol and ethanol, so we're gonna change the oil. Throw the car back together, do a final nut bolt check, uh, track inspection, and uh, we're ready to race. Cool, cool.
front bumper off, we made a couple changes to the car after World Cup. You know, you have some ideas about how it's going to go, and then you actually go to the racetrack and you find out that um, you need a few things. So before, when we were draining the intercooler and the test cans and everything, we're like, this is a pain in the butt. So on the main can in the engine bay to breathe the valve covers, I basically have a, a Venturi suction system that's going into the can. And uh, we have some video that we'll probably insert here to show you how that was working. So the can self drains into the main oil tank, and then the breather tank here and the intercooler are on a quick disconnect dry brakes. So we went to basically tool this setup. So when you plug these things in, it, it drains it, and when you break it off, maybe a couple drips come out. Um, so what else did we change on the car? I don't know if we've gotten any real footage of the drip pan here. So. We have a, a belly pan that we've been working on. Uh, we're, we're actually we're bringing this to market. Uh, our supplier kind of flaked out on the last minute. We had every intention of having these ready to go for Texas 2K, but this is fully NHRA spec'd out. It's got the two-inch lip all the way around, and uh, only the relief holes where it needs to be. And we plan on bringing one uh, to market for the rear as well. But uh, this kind of little insight behind the bumper, and we've uh, got all the every connection here. Is, as it can be, we have the oil tank heater, everything we can reach through the bumper, drain all this stuff through the holes in the bumper. So when we're at the track, it's just a quick pop it in, drain the tanks, fill them back up, go back out on the track. Okay.